Just 
behind the back of poverty and oh
She's making all things new Every word curse that's been spoken over you Is broken here and now In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name
And they thought they shut you down But you're taking back your place Oh, you're taking back your place Cause this land is yours With the God of angel armies by your side Thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your beautiful presence in this place. We thank you that you are always with us. Whether we feel your presence or not, you are always with us. You are right by our side. I thank you, Lord, that tonight 
we've already received a deposit from heaven. And I thank you, Lord, that's going to continue throughout the night and tomorrow morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Speaking of tomorrow morning, I just want to remind everybody that we will be here tomorrow morning. Um, I imagine worship's going to start about 930. So just call your pastor and say, listen, you'll see me next week. Don't worry. Uh, I'm a pastor. You know, it just happens. Tell your pastor, just chill out. You know, I'm coming to the Kevin meeting. Just uh, invite the whole church, in fact. Let, let them all come. Invite your pastor. Pastors need a fresh touch. Amen. Let me, uh, let me tell you, uh, tomorrow, uh, tonight, uh, first of all, uh, Pastor Sixto and the students and the team, they put together all the uh, packets, the food packets. So tonight, listen carefully, uh, Pastor Sixto, you're going to be back there. He's going to be in that far room where the uh, simulators are. If you're a single parent or a widow, or you just flat out are having some tough times and you need some groceries, go to the back tonight and uh, grab some, and then whatever is left over, the students, all you students here tomorrow will be taking the, those, uh, those bags with you to give to those that are in need, amen? So if you have a need, or if you, even tonight, if you know somebody, like your next door neighbor, they're not doing well, whatever it is, uh, we trust you, just go back there, grab a bag or two, and uh, Pastor Sixto and Susan will work that out with you. One of the things that uh, I am blessed to be a part of uh, with this ministry is Warrior Fellowships. And I understand there's a couple here. There's uh, Michigan Warrior Fellowship right here, right? And Cleveland, right? Somewhere. Cleveland Warrior Fellowship. And you're a Warrior Fellowship. Where are you from? Orlando. Where? Orlando. Rhode Island. Okay. <laughs> Rhode Island. I didn't catch it. <laughs> so, thank you. So... I think we need a warrior fellowship in the trobe. We need one here. So uh, listen, but the, the warrior fellowships, they're growing. They, the power of God is on them. I just read two testimonies. Uh, Australia, I don't know if, you, it, know if you know this, but they're still having difficulty meeting together and because of all the issues around the world. And because of the demand, uh, some of our friends that oversee a warrior fellowship have to have a warrior fellowship three times a week to meet the demand of the people that can't get anywhere for a meeting. And uh, they're all over Australia, they're all over the world. And then I just read another one where uh, in Kansas, <clears throat> excuse me, a brand new one that just started, uh, they had a, uh, the ladies had, uh, it's a ladies uh, warrior fellowship, and they had a lady come that's a nutritionist. So now they all have raised beds in their yards and they're growing non-GMO organic food to give away to everybody. <laughs> so, so I mean, I mean, I'm just telling you, now I, I, could, I could stand here for an hour and tell you stories. There, there's uh, warrior fellowships that are in homeless camps, you know, so that we have them in Japan, all over Germany. I could keep going on and on, but my point is I want you to be a part of that. You know, that we have people asking all the time, is there a warrior fellowship in my area? And if there's not, if you contact the ministry and you don't hear back after you fill out the link, is there a warrior fellowship in my area? That means there's not one within about 60 miles of you. So you know what that means. You have to start one. And so all you have to do is become a student. There's free courses. So uh, these warrior, fellowship, warrior fellowships, Kevin and Kathy, come into your home every week. They do all the work for you. They, they, they have a little lesson. They have a, a PDF. And all you do is you invite people and you start giving out to the uh, community. You start pouring out and you pray together. You fellowship. And you just start taking over your neighborhood and your community and your city. Amen. And so if you want to be a part of a warrior fellowship or, or, or uh, connect with one, all you got to do is go on the website and, and fill out the link and you can be part of that. But we're still looking for more and more and more. We want these in every city in the, in the world. We want these fellowships because it's doing so much for the kingdom of God. Amen. Okay. Um, I said about tomorrow morning, we will be here at 9.30 in the morning uh, with worship, so please be here. Are you ready to take an offering? Yeah. All right. Ushers, if you come, we're so thankful for the opportunity to give, to sow into the kingdom, to be a part of moving and advancing the kingdom forward. If you, uh, and I'm not trying to make you jealous, but I am, but I'm not. If you heard of what's going on behind the scenes with Warrior Fellowships, it's nonstop. The things that are going to continue to be released, continue to come out. And because of the giving, that's why you heard about Warrior Chat and uh, all these beautiful study guides and all these things that are keep coming out. 
uh, it's because you are being a part of this, supporting this. And Little Lives, you'll see it here tonight in just a moment. Kevin will oversee this in just a moment. What's going to happen with the children even tonight some more. You, there, you can't. I mean, that's just amazing what God's doing with the children, all the salvations that we're seeing and all the lives that are being touched. And so thank you for being a part. Thank you for sowing. Thank you for cheerfully giving. And there's no twisting of the arm. And like Kevin always says, he'll be back in Pennsylvania whether you give or not. So it's not about that. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to sow into your kingdom, to be a part of all that you're doing with Warrior Notes and all over the world. And Lord, we just feel like family connected together as we give, as we receive, as we be a part together. We thank you that tonight single parents and widows will receive food because of the giving of this ministry. Lord, we bless you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for giving. Um, I'll tell you, I already feel like there's several things the Lord's already spoke to me that's changed my life from this weekend. How about you guys? And, uh, you know, like Kevin was saying, something powerful's happening tonight. And let me tell you, it's happening inside of you because you're going to change a generation. Amen. And so uh, we, we just want to take a moment and just thank the partners again for making all this possible because you guys are so special. So if you're a partner, would you just raise your hand? We want to give you a big clap. Holy smokes. I think it's all of the trobe. <laughs> thank you guys so much. You guys are making a huge difference, a huge difference. And uh, we just want you to know how special you guys are. And I want to remind you this that um, you have, every month you have the partner letter from Kevin and Kathy. You've got the free CD download. You've got all these things available to you guys. So we want to encourage you to connect with that because that's how as a family we can stay connected. And uh, we have several thousand people on Warrior Chat right now. And so if you're a partner and you're not on Warrior Chat, we miss you. And we want you to download the app and we want you to join it because there's so many incredible things happening. Like um, if you were in the Warrior Chat, you would know that we've, uh, we've got some uh, powerful homeschool material ready to come out. And Kevin started to talk about a little bit. We got kindergarten coming out and so many things that are happening that we want you guys to be a part of that. So make sure you're part of Warrior Chat. If you're not a partner and you feel called to be a part of this, then I want to encourage you, you can get information out at the book table out there. Or if you're online, you can, you can join up on the website, kevinzadai.com. We want you to be a part of this because God is on the move. And, you know, Kevin's been saying for years, the move has already begun. And it's about us waking up and realizing, wait a minute, I don't want to miss it. Because there's moments when Jesus kept walking, right? And we don't want to be ones that be like, where was Jesus? And we missed him walking right in front of us. So God wants to use us. So thank you, partners, for everything. And students, let me tell you, I'm so excited because we've got our first graduation coming up in August. Yes. And right now we have over 50 graduates. And so we've got, uh, we've got a couple that are close. So we're just pushing them. Go over the finish line. And let me tell you, if, if you think um, that this is just a cute little school, because it's not, we have a lawyer graduating we have medical professionals. We've got some incredible people that are graduating this August. And let me tell you, if you've got your doctorate or if you're a lawyer or if you're a doctor or if you're, you're a physicist or maybe you're a submarine expert or something crazy out there, let me tell you something. We're getting testimonies from people all over the world that are leaders in their fields saying how this school has changed their life. Isn't that incredible? You can give that a clap, yeah. And so every week I, we get emails that say, how can I personally get mentored by Kevin and Kathy? Well, let me tell you, if everybody wants to get mentored, it doesn't, that's a, that's a little bit of a difficult situation, <laughs> right? But Kevin and Kathy, everything they do is for discipleship. Because like, even like he was saying at this last session, it's about you going and taking dominion where you live yeah. and you taking authority. Because if you're always waiting for someone to show up, then you've missed the whole gospel. 
right? And so I want to encourage you to jump in. And so Warrior Note School of Ministry is how Kevin and Kathy personally can mentor people. So all the sessions, all the stuff on there is stuff you will not find on YouTube. You'll not find it anywhere else. It's only at the school website and on, uh, at the university. So I want you to invest in you, okay? Kevin said earlier, a lot of people, like you're going to ask, you're going to be waiting a long time for someone to come and invest in you, right? Well, Jesus has made every provision for you. And Kevin and Kathy have that same heart that they want to invest in you. So jump in with the courses, jump in with the study guide, jump in with Warrior Chat and all these places because there is room for you at the table. And if you don't come and take your seat, that seat is left empty. And we don't want that. We want everyone to be a part of this, all right? So get some resources at the book table. Jump in online. We are so excited about what God is doing in your life. Amen? All right, Dr. Kevin Zadai. To do tonight, I want to train the kids to prophesy. And so how I, how I uh, figured I'd do this is I have all the kids come up. All the kids can come up now, and I need their help. Um, I want them to... Along with my staff, I want you to grab a stack of claws. We're going to do the claws first. And just hold a stack. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pray over these claws. And if you need healing, rather than me lay hands on you and be here till 3 in the morning, we're going to uh, lay hands on these claws because that's what Paul did in the, uh, in the Bible. So the kids are going to distribute them. We're going to pray over them. And then if you need healing in, and in your physical body, take one. And then after that, if you know somebody that needs healing, you take one. And that, number three is this. If you're having bad dreams, I want you to take one because I want to give the devil a headache. Yeah. Amen. All right. So, so Father, we just, we just lift up these. All the kids have one. Father, we just, you see these claws. They... They don't have the healing power in them, but I want you to put it in them, Father, right now. Your healing power. And we just touch this and believe, Lord, there's a green in touching this one thing, that your healing power will go into these claws and that you will stretch forth your hand and heal the sick through these children and through the staff. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. All right, if you need, if you need healing or you know someone needs healing, please raise your hand and let, uh, let these uh, staff and the kids. Okay, kids, if you see a hand up, hand them one cloth. Did I mention one? One cloth. Yeah. All right. Now, you just place your faith in the fact that it's, the anointing is transferable. Amen. Okay. All right. All right, if you're having bad dreams, take a cloth too as well. We, got, we still have claws. If you're having a bad dream, just take one, okay? Bad dreams. If the devil has an open mic night at night when you're asleep.
You wouldn't believe how many testimonies we have about these claws. You would not even, you wouldn't believe it. But you better start believing. God is moving. It's a point of contact. Anybody else need a cloth to take to somebody? Last chance. Raise your hand. Kids, I got, got somebody back there. Right there. Okay. All right, kids, come on back up. As soon as you do, there's one over here in the middle. Uh, in the middle section back here in the back. Pastor Sixto over center. I got one over there. I got a couple here, kids. Okay. All right, then the kids come back up when, you, when you've give, given away your claws. Okay. All right. Okay, kids. All right. Now, what, what I'm going to teaching the kids how to prophesy, um, I have rocks here, and they have a word on them. And so the kids are going to pick a rock. They're going to pray. All you kids, start praying. They at least appear to be praying right now. Okay. All right, and then you're going to pick a rock that God tells you to pick, all right? Then you're going to turn around and you're going to pray and you're going to give a word to somebody. You're going to deliver the rock. And don't forget the people in the back. Okay, so you ready? You ready to prophesy? Okay, all right, you're praying? All right, now everybody pick a rock and then ask God to show you the person you're supposed to give it to. We got all kinds of good words on here. Okay, kids, have you picked out? All right, don't forget the people in the back. They're, they need a word too, even if it takes you a day and a half to get there. Come on. All right. Here, Pastor Mike. Okay, so Paul said he wished that everyone would prophesy because he said prophecy builds up the church. So we're going to train kids in homeschooling. We're going to train kids how to become ministers right off the bat so there's nothing abnormal about it. And um, everybody, everybody should have a word of encouragement for each other. Everybody should. Okay, when you're done with delivering it, come on back up. And... Paul said you can give two or three words in a service a prophecy. So let's give, let's get a, let's get up there, quota up there. We'll give you a chance to do another one. You're doing good. Ready? Okay. All right, and then we got enough for one more word, so you're going to do three words for, for somebody. Three words, so come on back up. I need a sense of urgency here. I'm not seeing that sense of urgency. I command you to prophesy. Okay, and then after you're done with that one, come on back up. I have a, a gift for you. Okay, I want to give each of you a present, but, but you have to keep it in the package until after the service because it's a flute. Okay, so I'm giving each of you a flute, but you, you play it at home and bother your parents, but you don't, you don't do it here, okay, because we're going to preach tonight, so everybody gets a flute, okay? All right, and I want, this is what I want you to do. I want you to practice. Because someday you might come up here and, and, and play, and then I can sit back and relax. Okay? Everybody want, want a flute? All right, here. Here you go, sweetheart. Okay, here we go. You want one? Yes. Hi. You got, you got what you want? Okay, cool. Everybody got one? Okay. All right. Anything else we need to do? Is that it? <laughs> wow. <laughs> All 
Well, I, I want to worship some more, but uh, we, can, we can teach a little bit, and then we'll go back into worship. What do you think? Yeah. If you want to, you can sit if you want. It'll be like, yeah. Yeah, and then, we'll, then we'll, we'll, we'll finish it out. Um, I want to I want to tell you some things. Uh, I I have had some things happen that that kind of show what you're dealing with. So the demonic they 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 operate in secret. They don't want you to know what they're doing behind the scenes. They don't want to be known. Because that ruins their mode of operation. So angels are trained to just come and do the Lord's bidding. And they don't want to be noticed. So I know there's a lot of stuff out there that's not really right about angels. And so I, keep, I try to be, be good and keep my mouth shut. But there's a lot of things that, that, that people are saying that are not true. And um, I'm not going to talk about that tonight because... Um, I don't want people to unfriend me on Facebook. No, I'm just kidding. I'm still here. Um, angels don't want attention. In fact, they, they, they think it's an insult to get attention because they don't want to draw any attention away from God. So everything they do, they do in secret so that God gets credit for it. They don't want to be known. They don't want to be noticed. They, they don't, they're not like human beings. They were created to give glory to God. The only reason that some of them fell is because they were being loyal to the head cherub and they fell with their commanding officer. They were just following orders. So the angels that fell with Satan were just following orders with him. When he went rogue, they went with him. They didn't really discern at the time. They're all chained right now. I mean, if you want to bring Peter and Jude into it, they're chained right now in darkness. They're chained. Did I mention chained? The angels that left their abode are chained, according to the Bible, if you want to bring the Bible into it. Okay, so what Jesus encountered was not chained angels because they're chained. They left their abode. They left their assignment and they are chained in darkness. So Jesus wasn't addressing fallen angels in people. He was addressing unclean spirits, demons. Okay? According to the Bible. All right, so these evil spirits are disembodied from the flood. They want to stay in the area they were before the flood. That's why you have water spirits. They're just, it's not, it's not that big of a deal. It's just that they aren't going to drown because they don't have a body. So a lot of demon spirits stick around. According to the Bible, they stay in the area they're in from the flood. Because they, they wanted Jesus to leave them alone. They didn't want tormented before their time, but they were going to be tormented, but it wasn't time. They wanted to know why he was on the earth. And they thought, is it our time already to be judged? Have you come to torment us before our time is what they asked Jesus. Then they said they pled with him not to send them out of the area. So they pled that they could stay in Greensburg. So if they feel threatened, they're going to start to negotiate. If you're going to cast us out, don't send us out of the area. This is all very important. See, you have to use what the Bible says. So angels don't want attention. They only do the Lord's bidding. They don't wash your car. They're not, they're not to clean up your mess. They are not sent to clean up your mess. They are sent to do the Lord's bidding. It just so happens that you all need two or three. 
But that's not really their purpose. Their purpose is to keep you on the path. And on that path, they won't even allow you to stub your foot on a stone. They will lift you up, it says, in Psalms 91. But it says that they are special forces on special assignments for each one of you, okay? So the fallen angels are chained. These disembodied spirits are, are something else. They're from the hybrid race. They don't have redemption. But they were judged. Everybody listen to me. The reason they were hybrid is because of sexual sin. The hybrid race was destroyed. God repented that he had made man. So they weren't fully human anymore. They do not have redemption. Jesus came as a complete, full human being. All the genealogies in the Bible are connected. It adds up to almost 6,000 years since Adam. God is not using the Greek calendar. He's using the Hebrew calendar. So the 6,000 years is predictable because it's already published. That is true. The demons know at a certain time that they will be judged. The angels are already judged. Come on now. So in those days, the Nephilim, the Nephilim, Nephal means fallen. I am, at the end of anything, means plural. The fallen ones were on the earth in those days. The fallen ones were on the earth in those days. And, and, conjunction, the sons of God went into the daughters of men. There's three things there. There's three entities there. The fallen ones, they were the fallen angels that came and influenced the sons of God to go and have families with the daughters of men, all different, sons of God. So in Hebrews it says, to which of any of the angels did he call them a son? He never did. To which of the angels did he say, my son? I'm just quoting Hebrews. But he made man a little lower than Elohim. That is not the word for angels. He made man a little lower than Elohim. What did Jesus say to the Pharisees? Are ye not Elohim to whom the word of God was given? So the secret to all this is in those words. So the fallen ones, the fallen angels left their abode. They influenced the line at the top, the pure Adamic line that went this way for hundreds and hundreds of years to the flood. These live a long time. But down here you got Cain and you got what cursed Cain, and you have that line, and you trace that, it doesn't go across like this with the sons of God. They were the sons of Adam were the sons of God. This way, it was hybrid. The seed of the serpent got in to the line of Cain. So there came a point where the genetics... Um, a son of God was not allowed to go with a daughter of Ish, not daughter of Adam, Adama, a daughter of Ish, a different word. So you have this going down this way. You have, you have a huge amount of people on the earth. You've got to remember that everybody's having babies with everybody. 
and they're living hundreds and hundreds of years. So it's not like he had a family of five. He had hundreds because you lived hundreds of years. Came a point where they were not allowed because of the genetics. And they did it anyway. And when they did, God said, there's a seed of the serpent, there's a seed of the woman. There's your answer. So somehow it got into the bloodline. Okay, backing out of that cave. All right, so the demons used to be in a body, but they were hybrid, so they have no redemption. Some of the giant races, like Rephaim, means no resurrection. Their, their actual name, Rephaim, that giant race, means no resurrection. In other words, they have no redemption. They, they don't get raised from the dead. These beings hate human beings, pure stock human beings. They hate them because they can never have repentance. So none of these, none of these races can be redeemed. And the reason why is God destroyed them, and there were only eight that were perfect in their generations, it says, and that was Noah's family. So they were preserved on the ark. But the problem was something was on the ark, and I don't have time to get into it now. I will. But they were not supposed to have anything happening on the ark for a year if you know what I mean. And they popped up, the giants popped up after the flood. So David took them out. So these disembodied spirits, they hate us. And they don't want to leave the area that they were in. And they don't want to be tormented before their time. They're miserable. They're very hateful. They hate you. You... you can't have compassion on them. But here's the thing. They, the whole world was judged because of sexual sin. You've got to remember this. They're unclean spirits. They're, they're, that is why they were destroyed. It was sexual sin. Do I have to say it 14 times? It, if you see what's happening to the human race, it all has to do with confusion, with gender, and it has to do with undermining authority of a, of a man and a woman and the proper order of things. So if you look at all your favorite TV programs, it undermines authority. You've got a man that is a deadbeat, and you've got a woman who's got a strong personality that has to rule the roost. So the woman has the pants on. You've been, you've been bombarded with this kind of thing. And if, a, and, and, and if you notice... In movies and in all these things, a Christian or a minister is a nimwit in a movie. It, it, it degrades man. It degrades authority. It degrades somebody who's, who's a, a good person. And there's no news. Can you imagine watching news about angel visitation and how an angel saves so-and-so and, and this happened and God bless this person and um, they paid off their mortgage. You don't get that kind of report. You get all bad news. That's, that's, that's this realm of, of hateful spirits. This is too intense for a lot of people, but I have to do it. Okay, so the answer, the answer that you need is, is that these demons operate behind the scenes, but if they are found out, if you treat them as though you can see them, they flip out. They flip out if you know their mode of operation. So if special forces is going into an area in the military and those guys look down and they've got a red dot from a sniper rifle on them, well, then their cover's blown. They've been found out. And so it's over. 
as far as special forces go. So that's what happens with the demonic. So God can give you eyes that see. So when I was in Bible college, and this is all new to me, while I was seeking God, the largest church of this denomination was in Springfield, Missouri, Central Assembly. And I was sitting in this 3,300 member church I was sitting back on this side with a friend who is sometimes in my meeting. In fact, he's watching right now. And he will tell you that we sat right over there and we watched a street person who had come in. He walked by me like a zombie. Now, I'm just, I've been a Christian a year. He walked by me. The pastor is introducing the guest speaker. It was a Sunday night. Introduces the speaker. Me and my friend sat there and watched this guy come up here while the guy is talking. This guy comes up. He lays back in the air and levitates in front of 3,300 people. And no one does a thing. Now, he's completely leaned back. He's arched like the arch in St. Louis. And I'm thinking, is anybody going to come against this uncircumcised Philistine? Like David said. You know, I'm thinking, okay, I just became a Christian. I gave up everything, and no one's going to do anything about this? So I got up because the pastor wasn't going to do anything and the guest speaker wasn't doing anything. And I saw, well, you know, I'll just help him out here. <laughs> so I come up and I say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I rebuke you and I command you to leave this man. And he fell to the ground. And then the pastor stopped me and told me to go sit down. And you can ask my roommate. He said, they went back and gave him a bag of groceries and sent him on his way. He doesn't have a devil. He just needs food. I know he's watching. He could, he could verify this. Okay. So, I'm thinking, I just gave up F-16s and go into the academy for a powerless religion. So I went back to my room and I, I wept in my bed. And the Lord said, this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. I go, what does that mean? I didn't know. So I fell asleep. And I woke up to a hooded being about nine foot tall laughing at me. And he said something to me in another language that I didn't understand. And I started laughing at him. My spirit started laughing at him. Hello. And I got up out of bed and walked around him and went to the door. And this guy that was sitting with me is ready to knock on the door. And so I opened the door and I say, can you believe what, what is happening? I said, I got a bean in my room. And it was that head, that was the head honcho. He had a big brown, not black, bl big brown cape, hooded cape. And he pointed at me and he said something. And when he said it, the Lord just grabbed me and got me out of bed. And I went around him laughing. Now, I was with Southwest Airlines. I went, I finished my four-year degree there. I did two years at Rayma, and then I was at Southwest Airlines for a year when this happened. I'm on a Southwest flight from Phoenix to San Diego. And I had, during that time of those several years, 
I had asked the Lord to tell me what that, that being said. And he told me, he said, you couldn't handle at the time what he said, but I'll tell you what he said. He said, I will find you and I will kill you. You're mine. That's what he said. So I knew that. So I'm on this flight. I get a call and the flight tenants need me to come back there. This lady sees me. She turns her head the whole way at 360 degrees. She gets down in the aisle and slivers like a snake. I'm not making this up. My crew saw it. She had no backbone. And this is what she said. I have found you, and now I'm going to kill you. It was the same voice, but it was in a woman now, which really bothered me. So she went into a row. She got all the magazines, ripped them up, and she got a lighter out to light the plane on fire. So I just gave her a gallon of coffee. I might have gotten her too, but I threw it on the fire. I might have hit her, I don't know, I don't remember. I'm not, I'm not making this up. It was the same being, it was in somebody. It was the same words, it was the same voice, everything, okay? So when we got on the ground, the police came. They had to put her in a straight jacket. As they're carrying her out, she turns her head like an owl. And she said, I will find you and I will kill you. And they pull, they call, they pull her off. You have to understand that these beings hate you, but they can't do anything to you and unless you accept what they're saying. If the fear wants to get in there that you would even consider anything that they would do or say. Now, this is a lot for most people, but this is your answer. Now, now, Kathy knows I have hundreds and hundreds of stories like that. We do. We have hundreds and hundreds of stories like that, but nobody knows about it. But these spirits do not want you to succeed at anything, and they certainly don't want you to be healthy. They don't want you to be able to pay your bills. They don't want you to have any relationships with any Christians because you might agree on something and get it. This is a, this is a hard, cold, this is a cold, hard truth. And, and, you know, I can't do this in church. That's why I rent convention centers. But even when we rented the headquarters that we have now, there, we have cameras. I can go right now and look at them. At night, it's infrared. So you understand, don't you, that because of the fall, we don't see everything in the spectrum. Okay, actually, according to science, it's one-sixth of light. So your rainbow colors that you see, it's one-sixth of the pie. The rest of it is a, all a different spectrum that's there, but you need hardware, classified hardware, in order to see the whole thing. But over the years, they have released some of it so that you can see some things, okay? It's the same with sound. Fido, your, your fluffy dog, can hear things you can't hear. But that's because we used to be able to see and hear in all the realms, all the spectrums. So now we have to go by a hunch. We have to go by our spirit. Because our emotions aren't dependable, 
and our physical senses don't pick up everything. So you have to sense in your heart, in your spirit, the things that are going on around you. And you have to take your authority, even if you can't figure it out in your head. You have to walk in authority all the time. You always have to say no to the devil. Don't even let him finish. Just say no. And he's going to say, I haven't even finished. It doesn't matter. You're a liar. The answer is no. It's always no. You don't agree with him. You have to say no to the enemy. You say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, and you live an upright life in Christ Jesus. I mean, I'm just quoting the Bible. So Paul said, we say no to ungodliness. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness. These spirits are perverted. They push people. God leads people. See, Satan drives. God leads. We're sheep. We're led. We're not driven. You drive cattle. But you lead sheep. We're sheep. We're led. So if you feel pressure, if you feel any kind of confinement, the Spirit of the Lord is not present because it said where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Okay? If the Son has set you free, then you're free indeed. If you really, really want to do warfare, you have to realize that you have the advantage because Satan has been defeated. Jesus made a show of him openly, to quote Paul, triumphing over him through the cross. And like I said, John said that he destroyed the works of the devil. He destroyed all his works already. And even Jesus said, listen, to tell you the truth, the God of this world is already judged. He even said that before he was crucified. So we're, we are at an advantage, however, because he, they're cloaked you have to develop your spiritual sense. You're going to have to be a little sharper and, and listen to your heart about everything. So how this involves the prophetic is this. I had a call and my... You know, Ryan knows this person, very, very well-known prophet. And he called to say that, you know, you're going to Frankfurt in two days, which was correct. He said, your plane is going to be delayed. You're going to be delayed by a day. But you'll still make it to your meetings. I said, well, thank you. And I hung up. And I turned to Kathy in the kitchen so I hung up and I said, that will not happen. We will be early. Okay, that prophet was right. But prophecy is conditional, remember, in the New Testament. So if I leave it unattended, that's what's going to happen. Just like your silly dreams at night. If you're having a dream like you go through a red light and you get hit, well, you might not want to do that in real life. If you have a warning dream about your vehicle or, or, or some sort of relationship, you might want to go ahead and check a little deeper with that. You might want to do a walk around your car. You might want to pray and ask God, what, 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 because your spirit will pick up things ahead of time. This happened not far from here where we grew up. And I remember being warned not to go to work when I was ready to leave and be early and I was told, you're not, you're not to go. Wait 10 minutes and then go. I said, well, I'll be late. So I went out 10 minutes later, and there's police cars everywhere. And right where I would have went through in that intersection was a major, major crash where someone had lost their brakes coming down the hill, went into the car right through the intersection. So God didn't stop that from happening, but he prevented me from being there. This has happens many times. So when we did go, we had to go to St. Louis 
and then me and Kathy ran to our gate for Frankfurt. We got there, we went in, and we sat down. And the plane's not delayed. I was looking at my watch. They shut the door. And the flight attendant says, we have everybody on board, so we're going to push early. So we left early, got in early. And the only reason why is because I said that will not happen. Now, a lot of people think, well, you know how we think. The only thing is, what are you going to do with what I just told you? It was conditional. So the demonic wants to trip you up. The demonic wants bad things to happen to you. But according to Scripture, God is a good God, and he sends angels to protect you. So if there's a discrepancy in what's happening, I'm telling you your answer. Your answer is, is that the Holy Spirit wants to tell you of things to come because that's what Jesus said he will do. He wants to lead you into all truth. Well, if you want the truth, the person who would do that is the spirit of truth. That, that's, your, that's the deal. If you want to learn how to operate in the supernatural, in the spirit realm, then you want to talk to the master of the spirit realm, which would be the spirit of God. You want him to teach you. He's a teacher. He's, a, he's, he's going to help you. He's a helper. He's not going to lead you into temptation, but he's going to deliver you from evil. I mean, just to quote Jesus, I mean, if you, you want to bring him into it, he did say, listen, I'll tell you how to pray. Pray this way. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. He told us to pray that way. Well, why would he tell us to do that if it was already going to happen anyway? Why would we even pray? If it doesn't matter, God's going to get what he wants. God doesn't get what he wants all the time. Oh, are, you, are you hearing me? Yes. We wouldn't be told to pray if it was the way people say it is. If you just leave it and you just, you just let, okay, whatever happens, happens. You might as well just throw your oars away and go down the white water. Because you, you're not fighting at all. If you are not doing anything, you are going downstream fast. You're going with the flow, but it's the wrong way. A person who is a Christian who is in the Spirit and walking in the Spirit, they pray and they commit their life to God, and then they allow the Spirit to speak to them to make course corrections during the journey. So that at any one time... If there's an interruption, you don't take it personally. You just change in order to accommodate what the Spirit is saying. So Jesus was told, because he didn't do anything unless his Father told him to. He said that. I don't do anything or say anything unless the Father tells me. So obviously he was told to go to Nazareth, because he wouldn't just go there and unless he was told, because he said that. All right, so he goes to Nazareth, and because of their unbelief, I mean, if you want to bring the scripture into it, it says he could not. It doesn't say he would not. He could not heal anyone there because of their unbelief. That was his hometown. Did I mention he could not heal anyone? Except a few minor elements is what it says in Greek. No healings, no major anything. It says because of their unbelief. Okay, so the Son of God was hindered by people's unbelief. But the Father had sent him. And what does it say in Acts 10.38? He went around doing good and healing everyone that was oppressed of the devil. But he couldn't do it in his own hometown. You're all thinking. Okay, so this is how the demonic will accommodate the situation, is that if you are not sure that you're sent, you're going to fluctuate when you've run into trouble. So you have to know that you are on the right track, and I want every one of you 
to get to the place where you do things intentionally and you do it because you are walking in love and you desire, not out of compulsion, but you want to help, you want to follow God, and everything you do is based on love and not on your own agenda or being pressured and, and forced to do something that you don't want to do. Remember, Satan and demon spirits push. They drive people. God leads us. Okay? All right. So, I am not going to serve Satan. But I'm also not going to serve my flesh. Okay, so Paul said that if you walk in the flesh, if you yield to the flesh, it says you cannot please God. If you walk in the spirit, you please God. It actually says in the original, it's impossible to please God if you walk in the flesh. It also says that you're an enemy of God if you yield to the flesh. Now, what I mean by that is, as a Christian, you have the Spirit of God in you. You must yield to the person of the Holy Spirit. And we're not being trained in church to do that. And so, what happens is, is during a crisis, the church becomes paralyzed. And they can't operate What happened to you is you were ministered to in your soul and you thought it was spiritual. And a lot of things that happen that they call spiritual activity is really soul. And soul will not get you through a scamdemic. Will not get you through what you just went through. If you read what Paul said, which is still applicable to today, if you preach what Paul preached, you have a God who is actively with you, not seated on a throne hoping you make it or mad at you. He's not mad. He took it out on Jesus. He's happy. Everybody's happy in heaven. They're seated. It's complete. Period. The gospel, the good news must be preached now. And then the end shall come. According to Matthew 24, if you want to bring Jesus into it, he said, this is the sign that the end will come. He said, I don't know when I'm coming back. Only the Father knows that. Not the angels, not the Holy Spirit. It says, only the Father. The Son doesn't know. The angels don't know. Only the Father knows. That's the very words of Jesus in red. Okay, so what you're dealing with down here is you're dealing with demons that are pushing you. And they're pushing the timeline. They want to bring this thing to an end. And they want to do it as quickly as possible. They want to limit how long people live now in order for them not to find repentance. They want to shut this whole thing down so that a huge amount of people go to hell because they did not hear the message. And then the messengers that are supposed to be preaching the gospel are preaching current events and end time events. But the end can't come until the gospel is preached. If you want to bring Jesus into it, I think we should. Okay, so if you really look at the book of Revelation, a lot of things that are recorded in there are later on But where we're at is we're still in the age of the body of Christ and the church, that sector on the timeline. We are encountering warfare where Satan is pushing for the Antichrist to come forth. But Paul said to the Thessalonians, he cannot come forth because you know who it is that is holding him back. And that's us. Because the church is here. 
and you have the Holy Spirit in you. And until the sons of God are revealed is, is what it says in Romans. And in Hebrews, if you read Romans and Hebrews, you will find that all creation is groaning, that the sons of God would be revealed. So all of nature fell with man. They were subject to this bondage, not by their own choice. And if you, if you listen, and science will tell you this, that birds sing in a minor key. And if you look, animals, even though they're upset and angry and they want to eat you, you can see that animals also want to communicate as well, especially when they're hurt. And you'll have animals that want to eat you, but when they're hurt, they'll come to get, to get help from you because they know that you're the authority. But they've fallen. Okay, so all creation is groaning right now for the sons of God to be revealed. That's what the Bible teaches. But how many people are really preaching this? We all need to preach it. We all need to tell people that the God of this world desires to have you, but he cannot have you because you have been redeemed and you're born again and the Spirit of God is in you. That's the body of Christ. There's a unity in the Spirit now. And the curse has been reversed. The curse of Babylon and Babel was reversed on the day of Pentecost. So they had unity, but they were bent on evil. So they didn't have the right belief system, but they had unity. And it says there that God said, let us go down and stop them. Because if we don't stop them, everybody listening, there's nothing that they would imagine that they couldn't do. If we don't stop them, they'll be able to do anything that they imagine. That's what it says in Hebrew. Why? Because they had unity. But they were set on evil. So God came down and confused them and separated them confusing their languages so they couldn't talk and communicate anymore together. Then in the days of plague, later on in Genesis, it shows that the continents split. Because even a five-year-old can build that puzzle back together again, you know? So don't give me a hard time. It was split to keep man apart because they were bent on evil. But the key here is that Satan found out that the key is unity. So, he developed a system of denominations where you have hundreds of denominations that have hundreds of interpretations about Jesus. And every one of them says they're right. Nothing's ever resolved. It's just like all your tax dollars. You throw, you, you throw it to the government, but things are never resolved. You can't throw money at things. So the day of Pentecost reversed this curse. And in the spirit, we are one and we speak the same. We're all one in the spirit now. So when we pray in the spirit, we're all speaking in the spirit and we have unity together and if we would agree as touching any one thing it would be done for us the curse has been reversed the curse of babylon the babel has been reversed through the outpouring of the spirit which caused the church to come forth and the church jesus said the gates of hell cannot prevail against the that the church Okay, so what just happened? I'll tell you what just happened. We weren't being the church because we were ministered to in our souls, not our spirits. So ministry became appealing to you to keep you instead of making you soldiers that grew up, turned around, and went out. So it, the spirit of the world got into the church to make you a permanent customer to a ministry. But Jesus wasn't that way. Jesus said, Your whole, when he appeared to me, 
He said, your whole goal is to work yourself out of a job. You train people to do it and you work yourself out of a job where they don't need you anymore. Well, that's what Jesus did. But how many people would be willing to do that? It's money. It's the same way with, 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 the, with the medical. It's the same way with the banking system. It's the same thing with business. Everybody wants your money, but they want you to come back to them. So instead of just meeting your needs and developing a relationship, they manipulate. And nobody likes to be controlled or manipulated. So it's interesting that this headquarters, getting back to our headquarters, that when we put those cameras in, you could feel like, you know, when it's not your building, you can feel when you go into different places, you can feel stuff. And sometimes your hair just stands on end. It doesn't matter if you've been to heaven or not. If there's a presence there, there's something funky going on. But see, if you're just trained in your soul and in your body, you think you're going to respond in your soul or in your physical. You know, you're going to get a flag out or a tambourine. When the demons understand one thing, thus saith the Lord. And if you say that with the Spirit of God, they hear a rumbling and a fullness in your voice that is not you. So we, I observed right where our set is, where I sit every week and teach, it was empty. But right there on that spot where the pulpit is and where the table is, this on camera, I have an 8 by 10 glossy. <laughs> this entity comes and just stands right there in defiance, looks up at the camera. And then brings all his friends with him. And I got, hey, don't look at me like that. We have it on film. Thousands of orbs around this thing. This goes over well. No, this is why I have to have convention centers and, and things like this, is because the church can't handle this, but the church needs to handle it because there is nobody else besides us. If we don't do it, who is else going to do it? You don't, you, don't want, you don't want the devil governing himself and, and being the watchdog for himself. No one else is going to do this except us. Okay, so... I addressed it from hundreds of miles away. Kathy watched as we were in our offices as well, in other areas of the building, see it on camera. We took our hands together. Doesn't matter if it's 1,300 miles away or 50 yards away in another room. We took hands, it's dark. We took hands. And said, in the name of Jesus, I command you all to leave in Jesus' name. And it's on film. They started dashing everywhere, running into each other, bouncing off the walls. This is all infrared. This isn't even... Okay, so we went over there. We went over there because there's a couple that were being stubborn. So we went in there in the dark. We have our phone. I'm looking. I can't see a thing, but I'm looking at my phone, which is the camera. Here comes one. And so I started, we started addressing things. Now, people are going to think you're crazy anyway. <laughs> but the thing that is, is that one went through me and I felt it. I said, that's what that is. One dashed out. They were running into each other as we were mentioning the name of Jesus. And they, they just never came back. I guess they don't like us. <laughs> They're very bad. We had employees anointing all the doorposts with oil and keeping them out. 
But you know what? When certain workers would come in, those orbs would be following them in. You could see it on camera. I, didn't ho I hope you didn't think this was going to be a normal seminar. <laughs> but see, I had, I had to build you up to this because the government knows about the other realm. And they know, they know that these things are not from another planet. They're from another realm. They know that. <laughs> There's people in this room that know, know what I'm talking about. Because they follow me around. When I see the men in black come in, I know to just cool it. But you have to realize that God created the earth. He created the heavens and the earth. He is a spirit. Did you know that? Did you know that Jesus said that? God is a spirit. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Which means that the soul and the body do not communicate with a spiritual being. Your spirit communicates. So Jesus even said this, flesh is flesh, spirit is spirit. He said the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. He said that in the garden, telling his disciples to pray. Now listen, everyone in here is going to go to heaven. My dad's in heaven. He knows all of this already. But all of you are going to go to heaven. You're going to see this. And you're going to wish that you dealt with things down here in a different way than what have you have been. I'm telling you, this was a wake-up call for me. And I thought, why are we not being trained correctly? And you think it's always your fault. You're behind the curve. It's all, you, you think it's your problem. But demon spirits want to make it your problem if you'll accept it. So they want to damage everything because they can't win. They will never be redeemed. You cannot like the devil. You do not pray for the devil. You do not have any compassion on him. He is a terrorist. He has no conscience whatsoever. He has no conscience. He doesn't care. When you cry, he laughs. That is the honest to God truth about it. You cannot stay normal any longer. So, when we lose something, we pray. We've had our car keys after two hours of not finding them. We've had them drop in the center of a table with nothing on it right before our eyes because we asked angels to come. Daniel, I have to have that on, on with me. And I opened the cabinet up again, and there it was sitting on the top where it wasn't a second ago. So it's too late for, you know, you to say this or that, you know. You know, you want me to take a lie detector test? You want a sodium pentothal, whatever you want, you know. I think we need to give it to this, the government. Get some bright lights with some drips on their forehead. Where were you? What, you know, tell us the truth. No, listen, listen, we're, we're, at, we're toward the end of all things. But this is the time to shine. The only way we're going to shine is we've got to submit to the Spirit and we've got to get our answers. Paul said we're not ignorant of his devices. That word there is battle strategies. We're not ignorant. Well, I don't know very many people that that know his strategies. I mean, there's a couple of people, but they've already passed on. Who's leading the pack now? Where Derek Prince is gone. Lester Summerall is gone. I, 
Pastor Summerall, who has prayed for us, he's preaching, he's talking about his airplane, loading it up with rice and food and his ship. He had a ship loaded up with food. So I, I need, I need four hundred seventy thousand dollars. Let's take the offering. And people start standing up and swearing at him that go to church there. And there, there's demons talking through these people, and they're nice church people. And he's just doing the announcements. He hasn't even started his sermon yet, and the demons, foul mouth man's voices in women which I guess isn't wrong anymore but <laughs> listen to me I want to get back to those kind of generals we can do this but we can do it together okay so you, you do not let the devil have any power you do not let the devil have any voice. You do not, it doesn't matter if you're fighting disease, if you're fighting your relatives, whatever you're going through, it does not dictate the truth. Paul was struggling before he became a Christian. Romans 7 was written from that perspective. He said, the things that I want to do, I can't do. But the things I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Oh, wretched man that I am, who is going to help me? He said, but praise be to God through Jesus Christ. And he goes into Romans 8. That is your answer. That is the template for your life. Your deliverance comes not from wrestling demons. Your deliverance comes when you know that you're sent and you're appointed The demons are seeking whom they may devour. The devil is a roaring lion, it says in Peter, seeking who he may devour. Well, just don't be edible. <laughs> Jesus said, when you cast out a demon, it goes into arid places and seeks a new habitation and tries to find rest, but finds none, it says. So Jesus said, the demon thinks, I'll just go back to the house I was in. So he returns according to what Jesus said and sees that it's clean, swept, and nice but unoccupied, right? And he comes with seven other that are worse than him. And now the condition, Jesus said, of the person is much worse than the original with the demon. With one demon, now it's worse and the demon was cast out and he brought others with him and now the condition of the person is worth is worse this is the proper way to look at it so if you want deliverance from any kind of addiction if you want to put the devil to flight you have to submit to god resist the devil which is the word that is used for resisting arrest you push back you refuse to be apprehended. And so now, whatever the cop stopped you for is just the beginning. Now you have another charge, which is resisting arrest. The word for resist the devil, after you submit to God, you push back. You resist apprehension. And it says that if you do those two things, the devil will flee from you. And there's an extra word there in Greek, as in terror. I'm just quoting the Bible. But you wouldn't even believe that that's in the Bible based on what you've seen happen in this country. 
And it is the church's responsibility to not allow the gates of hell to prevail against the church. The gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. So Christianity became cosmetic. It became something that we do and not something that we are. Do you get it? So a lot of things in our soul are okay. But then when something spiritual happens, we're not able to click over and operate in the spirit properly. So we're supposed to put demons to flight. Those who embraced Jesus, John said, he gave them the power to become sons of God. That word there is authority, like I mentioned last night. That seems so long ago. Okay, so a lot of you are going through things, and you're not able to really pinpoint what's going on. There's some of you that you feel physically there's just something going on. You feel mental anguish and attack. You are not being left alone, even with people. You're, you're being targeted. And what demons do is they create cycles because they do not know the times and the seasons. So they need to use the stars and the position of the planets and the stars in order to figure out the times and the seasons. And so one of the big ones is the full moon. So when they see the full moon, they know it's a 30-day cycle. And so if you talk to anybody that works at the hospital or any place, the prisons or anything, the demons have a heyday. No one wants to work during a full moon. But it's not superstitious. It's based on the cycle. So demons want you to adhere to your zodiac sign so that you become predictable. You actually help them out. And the person you're supposed to marry, you don't marry because they're Leo. It has nothing to do with that. Demons operate to get you predictable because you are not predictable. In fact, nothing's predictable and unless they insert inside of you a thought to get you to do something. Then once they get you to do something and you commit that, then they try to get you to enforce that as a habit. And it's a cycle of temp temptation. And it's clockwork. And even Jesus said, the devil's coming, but he has nothing in me. He knew he was coming. So the solution, your answer is right there. He's coming, but does he have something to hook you with? Because that's what it says. I told you that today. It's a flesh hook. It's, Jesus had nothing in him that, he, that the devil could hook him. This has to do with that, that, that disembodied race. Those spirits that were judged by the flood. They don't have a body. That's why they seek embodiment. Because they can't have any expression unless they use you. They want to hijack your mouth. They want to hijack your mind. The weapons of our warfare, I mean, if you want to bring the Bible into it, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, it says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. Okay, spiritual warfare. To the pulling down of strongholds, it says that it will arrest or take captive any thought to the obedience of Christ. Anything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God, bringing it into captivity. That word there is handcuff and incarcerate. Every thought. Okay, well, wait a minute. I thought this was spiritual warfare. Okay, well, Paul in Galatians said, here's the works of the flesh. And one of them was witchcraft. What? See, what we don't understand is it's what manifests those spirits 
are not worth a thing if they can't manifest. They have to have access and expression or they're powerless. They need your cooperation. So they create cycles of rejection and they target you by causing you to go through a cycle and no matter where you are on the planet, someone will do and say the same thing and you will go into a tailspin. It's a cycle of rejection. You don't have to be possessed and they don't even have to stick around. They just develop a button they can push. And the wound of injury that you've received in your life never heals because it's a cycle of rejection. They make you a victim and you're not. They keep opening the wound so that it never heals. Well, that's stopping tonight. Yeah. Amen. And that's why I wrote this study guide. I wrote this study guide because you got to shut the cycle down. You got to shut it down and you got to be prepared that he's coming. But he has nothing in you. And this is the highest form of deliverance. When you are with a group of believers in the corporate anointing and you love each other, we all are on the same page. And we're here in this wonderful city that is shaking in the spirit right now. And all the prophetic words that were coming forth, even in the worship, is speaking to the spirits. I mean, Paul said this. Paul said, if the powers that be, those hierarchy in the spirit, would have known, they would never have crucified the Lord Jesus. They were sucked right into it. They would have never crucified. They fell right into the trap. So it says in Colossians and in Ephesians that we are to display God's glory so that it judges, Paul says, so that it judges and testifies to the prince of the power of the air about God's goodness and his glory. It is to be expressed through his church, the body. Paul talks about this in Colossians 1 and 2 and in chapter 3, also in Ephesians 1, 2, and 3. In Ephesians, he goes further in chapter 4 talking about the body and the fivefold and how the body functions because this is the power on the earth. So it is, it is only in this dispensation, in this culture, in the way that we do things that we have done this thing. Jesus did not have prayer lines. He did not have fire tunnels or whatever you want to call it. He didn't have Bethel music. They didn't have any of that stuff. They, they didn't have book tables. They didn't have any of those things. What they had was they had people that would not be allowed in the synagogue. Jesus was kicked out of the synagogue. So he went out into the fields. He spoke to people that were agrarian culture. They were farmers. So he spoke to them with parables about farming at a level that everyone would understand, and he healed the sick. But he, there were thousands of people there. So people were getting healed, but not everyone had to have Jesus touch them. That would not be, that, that couldn't happen. He'd be there all the time. It'd be continual. Everyone that came to him was healed. It says that everyone that came to him was healed. And then he told his disciples, you're going to do the same thing. And everyone that believes afterwards, you're going to do the same thing. And when the Spirit comes, you're going to do even greater. It says greater works because I go to the Father. Well, that's still here. That's still where we're at right now. So tonight, you're going to be fully convinced that the demons have been found out and that it cycles. So you're not rejected. We talked about this last night. The spirit of acceptance is in you. The spirit of adoption is in you where your heart cries out, Father, Father. 
full acceptance. You, you are, you're fully accepted. I know this. I stood. I couldn't make a mistake about it. Jesus was three feet from me. I looked into his eyes. And he told me about my future. And then he sent me back here. And when he told me about my future, and when he spoke to me, it was profound. I looked into his eyes. He had no ability to know anything about my past because it was gone. So he talked to me as though I had never sinned. He addressed me as one who had never sinned, but yet I had. And when I looked into his eyes, he really didn't know because it was all wiped away. And that's what it says in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. The, the accusing voice against you has been silenced. The file is gone. It says there's no accusing voice. The records are erased. It says that right in Roman, Romans 8, 1 and 2. And I saw it in his eyes. I, I was forgiven. He had no record. He didn't know. There was no reference point. So the first thing you do is your spiritual warfare has to do with you settling it, that you're either forgiven tonight or you're not. You're either clean or you're not. If you're not, then you just come forward and we'll pray with you. If you are a Christian and you have received Jesus Christ, you have been cleansed of your past sins. There's no record in heaven. I'm telling you, he does not know. He talked to me. It was so surprising to me. He talked to me as though I'd never sinned. And he said, you and I are going to do this, this, and this in eternity. And he showed me the future. And then he sent me back. So down here, I only think about that. I do not think about what I can't not do. I don't think about being a victim. When people do wrong to you, you don't consider it. You don't keep a record of wrongs. Because the demonic wants you to do that. If you forgive, it turns the case over to God. It's for your benefit to forgive because the demonic has nothing. I'm telling you, forgiveness is for you. It's not for them. They don't get away with it. Trust me. Jesus even said it to me. He said, they're going to wish they dealt with you, but now they're going to deal with me. That's what he said to me. Because you hand the case over. Well, the whole court in heaven is rigged the son is your lawyer and the father is the judge. So, so let's, let's, let's just resolve right now that we're all forgiven, okay? Let's just resolve that the past is gone, okay? So now you operate with intention, with destiny. And you ask the spirit, okay, from now on, what would you like me to do? And what he's going to do is he's going to get you to do things that will get you out of that cycle. It's a demonic cycle. So what's going to happen is he's going to, by the Spirit, tell you to do things that's going to unhook you from the system. And that's why there's certain things that you have to do to deny yourself. The, it's, it's not that God wants these things from you. He wants you. But he knows that a hook goes in in a certain direction. If you keep pulling on that, it doesn't unhook you by pulling it the way it went in. You have to reverse the direction in order to unhook. So what God will do to you will, will appear to be the opposite direction that seems logical, but he has to unhook you. So it has to come out the way it came in. You have to break this cycle. Now all the demons right now are flipping out 
because they've been assigned to destroy you. The angels that are assigned to you, they have to yield to you. We are actually higher than the angels, but it doesn't appear that way now because we fell and we've been redeemed. But it clearly says in Scripture that we will be placed above them and that they will be subject to us. So in the Spirit, they would long to look into these things about salvation because they, they don't understand why God loves human beings as much as he does. He invests everything in them. And so they are waiting for us to agree with God. Once we do, and we start to say what God says, they hearken unto his voice through us. So when you say something that is from the word of God, or you, you speak forth the prophecies that have been spoken over you, they are they, 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 they consider that God's will because they know what God has said about you. They read your books. They're sent to minister for those who are going to inherit salvation, according to the Bible in Hebrews. They're flames of fire. They hearken unto the voice of the Lord. But if you are speaking what God is saying through his word, then they hearken unto that, and you're cooperating with them. And things are going to change because you're sent. And Jesus set his face as flint toward Jerusalem because he was sent to do what he did. No one took his life from him. He gave it willingly. So when Peter spoke by Satan and said, you're not going to Jerusalem and you're not going to die, he was speaking from the satanic realm. And so Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. He's looking at Peter. And Peter probably has a stress crack in his forehead because he realizes what just happened. Jesus just called him Satan. Why? Because Jesus heard a spirit speak through one of his disciples. And he nailed it. He nailed it. He, he took captive anything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Bringing it down, he brought it down. Even if it's his own disciple. Do you have that kind of intensity in your life? Jesus had to deal with this. He said, how long am I going to be with you? He said that all the time. Every time they would come to him. Say, Lord, we couldn't cast it out. We couldn't heal this person. He say, how long will I be with you? In other words, not much longer. You have to get this and pass your tests because I'm handing this off to you. We are at that place now where the body of Christ, the church, has to engage God on the level of ambassadorship, which means you have been given full authority of the one who sent you. This is why you're not fulfilled in church, is because there's not enough of this message being spoken from Paul the Apostle. If, if you would do me a favor and read Colossians and Ephesians, and after you've done it a couple hundred times, you're going to get it. Because what's going to happen is you're going to get a frame of mind about the plan for the ages that Jesus was using Paul. He said, this has been hidden in, in, in times past, but now it's revealed, Paul said. The mystery of the ages is revealed, which is what? Christ in us, the hope of glory. So we have authority. Jesus said we're going to trample on serpents and scorpions and have power over all the enemy in Luke, right? Okay, that is exactly word for word what is said in Hebrew in Psalms 91. It says we'll trample on serpents and scorpions. Jesus is quoting Psalms 91. So if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. Come on now, the Old Testament is just this little blank page that separates 
the same God that was in the Old Testament is on the same throne in the New Testament. It's just a little blank page that separates the Old and the New Covenant. It's the same God. And Psalms 91 proves that we have authority. And Jesus said we have authority. Okay? All right. Now. What I want for you is to have forever dealt with the devil so that you don't have a revisit. But the only way is to hear what I'm saying. You put him at notice that you're done, you're done with this, but then you are aware of the cycles of rejection and victimization. Anything that happened to you that's unresolved, where you cannot file it, and you don't understand why God let it happen. Well, he'll let you right now get up and leave, even if you're not supposed to yet. And if you are, you could sit here and you're supposed to leave and you don't. You can do that. You have a free will. So you have to will that you're going to break this cycle. These things don't want to leave this area. They're assigned to the bloodlines, the generations. So if you, if you don't put a stop to it, then your children are going to deal with it. Now, if you want to put them on notice, if you really want to flip the devil out, let's all stand and let's all agree. You know, we're going to be really close in heaven. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to want to hold your hand and talk to you about what God did for them while they were on the earth. You're going to continually be getting blasted with testimonies from people that said, you, you don't know this, but because you did this this day and you, you witnessed to my parents, they came home and had my whole family pray the prayer. And I got saved because you had the guts to tell my dad that they need Jesus. You're going to find out all these chain, these domino effect of things that happen. I want the cherubs. Do you got a microphone? I have hired four cherubs. They're all here. Hey. Right. I'm training the teens to prophesy. And so I tell them, you better get ready. Now, all you students, you're next. I'm going to start calling the students up and handing you the microphone. It better be more than kumbaya coming out of your mouth. <laughs> all right, we all agree. We all agree, right? It's touching this one thing. The issue with your addictions, your problem with the devil, it is finished. I don't have to lay hands on you. I'm telling you, it's done. It's a cycle of rejection. All right, everybody agree? Father, by the authority in Jesus' name, we break every power, every foul line devil's assignment over every individual in this room. I break every lying devil's power, and I command you, and I drive you out. I drive you out in Jesus' name, and I forbid you to ever come back. Don't say a word, just leave. In Jesus' name, by the blood of Jesus, I pronounce everyone delivered. I break the power. Of this Hallelujah.
Let's worship. Let's worship. Okay. Hallelujah. The cherubs want to say so. <laughs> I just feel like, you know, you have a clean slate and when you are looking in the father's eyes, you can't turn around and see your trauma. You can't see your past. When your eyes are gazed on the Lord, you have no time to look back. It, there's nothing there. It's wiped away. Today is the day to resolve that within yourselves and keep your eyes looking forward. We don't have the time to look back. You are on a mission. Stop looking back. Look into the eyes of the father. Resolve it within, within yourself that your trauma is gone. Your sin is gone. You have had your breakthrough. You have had your breakthrough this weekend. And tomorrow when you wake up, don't even think about the past. Think about all the things that you're going to accomplish to finish your race, that God is giving you everything this weekend. You have received the word of the Lord and don't question it. These words have penetrated your heart and I know that they have. I had planned to say something a little like compliments what Becca just said. Um, you just you just need to focus on him. He if you just focus on him, pray in tongues, listen to worship music, just focus on him, get in his presence, magical things will happen. Just she's gonna start playing the music. You need to just focus on him. Don't don't let distractions distract you. That's just the devil trying to turn you away from him. You need to focus on him. You need to focus on the music. Focus on him. Because if you focus on him, so many things will happen. I, I would know. <laughs> okay? Um, just, just focus on him, and he has so many things planned for you. Just, just focus on him. <laughs> Like they were saying, we're all talking about how the past is like defining you, but the past is not your future. This is the past, and we need to go into the future. God has been with you, but he is going to be you and be in you in your future. We need to let the past be the past. Everyone's done stupid things. That's fine, but that's the past. We need to keep going into what the Lord is saying and keep going into what your destiny is. <laughs> okay, I'm going to keep it short and simple. I just want to say he is a good God. Anything bad that happens in your life, consider it warfare and move on. Because God does not cause bad things to happen to you. He is a good God. Hallelujah. Well, there's nothing like spur of the moment. Kevin wants us all to share it briefly, but uh, before I do... A quick announcement again, we will be here uh, tomorrow morning, 9.30. You can see that it's just going on and on, amen, with what God's saying. And I was standing over there as Kevin asked me to share for just a second. And the Lord told, wanted me to tell, you, to tell you that it's not over for you. It's a new beginning. Listen, it doesn't matter how old you are. I'm about to turn 50 myself. It doesn't matter how old, old you are, how young you are. It's never too late. You're not done. Those gifts are coming up and out of you. There's prophecy in you. There's gifts of healing and miracles, signs. And it doesn't matter who hasn't given you an opportunity, who has given you an opportunity. None of that matters. You can pray for somebody at the gas station. You can pray for somebody in your own household. But it's not over. This, 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 you have to mark this meeting down for yourself as a life moment, a life-changing moment in time that it's a new beginning for you. So when you leave here, whether it's tonight or tomorrow, when you leave here, everything is going to be different because your thinking is different. Those devils aren't harassing you anymore. So it's a new beginning. Amen. Amen. I was standing in the corner and this is what I heard from the Lord. He says, if anyone is in this room, and if you're holding on to any unforgiveness to anyone around you in your past, especially family members, if this very moment, if you would, think of the name of that person 
and out loud you say, I forgive in Jesus' name and let go now. Are you ready? One, two, three. Name out and say, I forgive. In Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to speak for a second. There's some of you that may be standing here well, and thinking that you're a failure. And I want to tell you that God can use your failure as a stepping stone. When I was in my very last semester of nursing school, I failed the final by 0. 0.3 points. And I thought my whole destiny was over, but it was a stepping stone and you have to decide that you have to fight for your destiny. If you have one word from the Lord that you're supposed to do a certain thing. See, I had heard from the Lord that I was supposed to be a nurse. But when I failed, I even had family members and, and people that I trusted. Oh, I knew you were going to fail and you need to do this and that. I, I, God spoke to me. that No, because I had a word from the Lord that I was supposed to be a nurse. So I went before the board of nursing. I reapplied and I passed. And now I'm a nurse because God spoke to me that I'm supposed to be a nurse. And if you would have told me five years ago that I would be standing here before you, I would have laughed and said, you're crazy. But God is the God of destiny and sometimes you have to war with it. And God is the God of above all you can ever ask or imagine. He will do so much more than you could ever dream. And you can reach so many more people than you ever thought that you ever could. I was just a little nurse who spoke in tongues at a bedside and won a couple people to the Lord. But God said you need to reach thousands. I'm telling you, He is a God above all you could ever ask and imagine but you have to fight for your destiny. You have to fight. You gotta fight. Put your boxing gloves on, put your determination on, and fight for what you know God has called you to do. I just wanna speak that you're not to go back the way you came. Okay, this is, a, this is new ground that you've established, so don't go back the way you came. Go forward with all that you've learned this weekend. Let what has ministered in your hearts come alive. You are children of God. You are the children of God, and I know you've been sent, and I know the Lord has called you. He has called you to greater things. You're not just to stand there and be quiet. You're to speak. You're to prophesy. You're to speak the name of Jesus <laughs> where nobody else is speaking the name of Jesus. You are to let a roar out in this city. You are to speak over Pittsburgh, Greensburg. You are to speak out and let that light from heaven shine through you and prophesy into your land. Occupy, occupy. The Father says, occupy this land. I have given it to you. It's yours. Now take it. Take it and go. Go with him. Every single one of you received something this weekend. You it's not over yet. So if you haven't heard it, well, you're gonna hear it. But each one of you have heard one thing. Go say that. He wants you to speak that out. Speak the gospel, the gospel message. It's, it's, it's burning in you. That fire is burning. So just roar, 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 roar. Let it out, let it out, let it out. 
Hallelujah. Shorabashi. Roma serime. Roma deke show. Roma sa. Roma serime kideo. I heard the Lord say this. You are mighty. You are mighty. Receive what you receive this weekend, this evening in Jesus' name. You have the greatness, the power, immeasurable power of His greatness on the inside of you. You would declare His glory. You would declare His goodness. You would declare His healing. You would declare His deliverance. Demons will bow at the name of Jesus. And I heard fiery tongues of fire. Tongues of fire. Tongues of fire. Pray in the Spirit often. Pray in the Spirit often. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I hear the Lord saying, Take back this territory. Take back this territory in His name. Roma Sora. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. I just feel like the Lord is saying, Lift up your eyes because the harvest is ready. And we all have lost loved ones, we all have lost neighbors, co workers. And now that you are healed, that you've come here and you've gotten your gift, and now that you are healed, now it's time to go after the lost like never before. Like grab some food, uh, like Kevin talks about all the time, pay for a, a meal for a, a single mom or uh, different people. But now is the time. You know, you're, you're here, now you're, you're, you're full, but now it's time to go and give out. Amen? Amen. The Bible says... For the Son of Man came to seek, seeking to save that which was lost. Many times he left the 99 and he went after the one. Don't get so caught up in numbers. Maybe it's just your neighbor. Maybe it's just a coworker that you know God's working on them. Begin to pray for them. Begin to fast for them. And go after them in the Spirit. Amen. 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 So I just feel like I'm supposed to... Um, validate you in the sense of there is a war that you know that you're facing in your home, in your job, your finances, whatever it is. But you have to know as much as you know that there's a war that you are the one that's assigned to take it out. And so I'm just going to share this real quick that, you know, when I first got saved, I got a, a, a hokey little drum set and I used to play on it dreaming I could one day play before the Father. That's all I cared about. And I, I kind of gave it up for almost 20 years. And then this, uh, this incredible guy named Kevin said, hey, Mike, come play. But what it was is when I was first saved, there was something inside of me that said, I need to beat the snot out of the devil. And I expressed it through the drums. Well, all of you have something inside of you that you're supposed to release that is going to shake hell. So what you do is you go home and I don't care if it's a pot and pan. I don't care if it's, you just, you find something and you begin to release what's in your spirit. Because when you release it, something's gonna shatter in the heavens. And you're gonna find what you, you can, cause you know what I'm talking about. You feel it holding you back. But when you begin to release what's in your spirit, it's gonna break that thing and you're going to find yourself begin to accelerate. You're going to accelerate. But it's not going to happen until you take the stand. So you start here tonight. You take what's been in you from the very beginning. And even if it's been there for years and you've never released it, you begin to say, this is the day, this is the time. I'm not waiting. Because you'll wait forever and it'll die with you. Don't let the seed die. Plant it in the ground, release it, and take back what God has called you to take. Yeah. 
proto, prata, pusta, pane, 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 haye, 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 haye. I am that I am, says the Lord. I am that I am. I am the great I am. I am the great I am. And what I say, say will stand. What I say will stand. What I say does stand. What I say remains. What I say stays and remains and remains and remains and remains and remains and remains. I am the same yesterday, today, forever. I remain unchanged, 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 unchanged. Seek my face. Stay before my face. Stay before my face. Stay before my face. Let nothing come between you and me. Let nothing come between you and me. Apprehend that which Jesus Christ apprehended for you. Apprehend it. Everyone raise your hands and apprehend. Be aggressive towards what the Lord has done for you. He has poured out his love on you. He has given you everything he has. He has poured out his entire kingdom for you. He has poured it all out. He's poured it all out. He's held nothing back. As we worship now, let's not hold anything back. Hold nothing back. Lift up your voices. Lift up your voices. Lift up your voices. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory, Lord. You are holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. Lord God Almighty. Who was and is and is to come. And is to come. And is to come. And is to come. You're the Holy One. You're coming back. We're coming back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Shine. 
back to our remembrance every promise you've made to us bring back to our remembrance every prophecy you spoken over us cuz i know if you said it oh you're gonna make a way and i know if you said it you're gonna come
my deepest desire. You are, you are, you are my deepest desire. My deepest desire. Sing it out again. You are.
You see 